This is Delgar the Casual Gamer bringing you episode 4 of my Feed the Beast Unleashed series. Actually what I'm playing on here is my multiplayer server. On this server I'm playing with several friends and it was set up by my friend Tim and I like to call it Tim's Tech World because basically it's filled with technical mods. The three big mods that are on this server that basically make up the bulk of the mods are Buildcraft, Industrial Craft 2, and Universal Electricity. I currently haven't been doing much with Universal Electricity or Industrial Craft 2 and have been spent and bleh, and have spent most of my time working on Buildcraft. Right now, I've been working on a mod called Forestry. And what Forestry adds to the game is it adds a bunch of ways to do automated farming. It adds a bunch of new woods. It adds a bunch of new machines. It adds some more engines that you can use to produce power. But the fun thing that it adds is bee breeding, bee and tree breeding, to be more specific. So in today's episode, I'm going to be talking about the birds and the bees. Well, more specifically, the bees and the trees. Why would anybody want to breed bees? Well, one of the main reasons for breeding bees is that you generate bee products, like honey, honeydew. But once you breed bees to a certain point, you can actually start generating really, really crazy products like iron and silver and diamonds and blaze rods. So without further ado, let's get started in bee breeding. In world gen, bee breeding adds hives to the world. Like this meadows hive here that I found out in the wilderness. Now if you were just to uh, smack the hive you could break it, but nothing will come out of it. However, if you use a scoop, which you just make from sticks and wool, and you break it, you get a bee. And a lot of times you'll get what is known as a princess, and I got a, I got a honeycomb. Um, and sometimes you'll get drones. So once you have a princess and a drone, you can actually start breeding your bees. So let's head on back to my bee breeding station. I'll see you in a second. And here we are at the greenhouse that I built and this is where all the bee breeding magic happens. It's a pretty simple little greenhouse made out of wood and glass and on the outside here I have an iron tank which holds liquids and there's this um, crazy multicolored liquid inside and if I look inside it's liquid DNA. I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about this maybe a little later um, but it's 21,400 millibuckets of liquid DNA which is basically 21 buckets of liquid DNA. So as we come into the uh, bee breeding warehouse, um, when I started this uh, bee breeding operation, I planted probably like six or seven flowers. But as you can see, as the bees breed, more and more flowers have popped up. Okay, so the main reason why I started breeding bees in the first place is I wanted actually to breed trees because I wanted a tree that was going to produce more fruit. The standard apple tree doesn't produce all that much fruit. And I wanted a tree that produced a lot more fruit because I've been using the biogas engines, which basically uses natural products to produce energy. Natural products such as apples, saplings, etc. And the way tree breeding works is if you have bees working in the area from hives, what they will do is there's a chance that they will pick up pollen from a neighboring tree and plant it on another tree. And this is very random because basically it could pick up a tree from the same tree and land on the other tree but as you can see I can't really see if anything's going on here that's because I actually need to be wearing these spectacles and when I put the spectacles on you can actually see which leaves have been pollinated and that means that um, a, a bee has basically picked up pollen from one tree and planted it on another and so there's a chance that a certain mutation has occurred or I've just created a genetic hybrid. But to collect these normally when you break leaves you only have a small chance of getting the sapling and because this takes such a long time we need a, a way of getting this 100% chance of getting a sapling out of this so that we can tell whether we've created a new tree. So what you build is a grafter and when you break a leaf with a grafter you get a 100% chance of getting a sapling which is good because when you're breeding trees <laughs> it takes a long time. 
So let me get a few more of these saplings here and I'll show you what I got. Okay, so the two types of trees that I have breeding outside right now are hill cherry and pomelo. And so as you can see, I got a bunch of hill cherry saplings and pomelo saplings from breaking some of the leaves. I also got a lemon sapling, a um, bunch more hill cherry saplings, and I got what I was actually looking for, which is a mandarin sapling. And so to actually, um, as you can see, it says unknown genome, to actually type out these trees, you can actually use what is called a trealizer, which actually costs a diamond and a bunch of other materials. But if I click open my trealizer, as you can see, it uses honey for power. And then I can click the mandarin sapling over here, and it tells me the species of active and inactive. And basically, both tree and bee breeding follows a Mendelevian so basically both bee and tree breeding so basically both bee and tree breeding follows basic Mendelian properties where you have a primary and secondary gene and when the two species come together the two genes mix so if I were to breed this with another mandarin mandarin you would end up with a mandarin mandarin however if you breed it with a mandarin hill cherry you could end up with uh, various combinations of mandarin hill cherry hill cherry mandarin However, when you breed certain trees together, there is a small percentage chance that the species could mutate into a new species. So in my case, I was breeding hill cherry and pomelo together, and what I got was mandarin. And now that I have a mandarin tree, I could then breed this with other trees and try and get another mutation species. Now, not every tree breeds with every other tree, and basically it's a really basically just a trial and error of plant the trees and see if they mutate or you can find a list online and, and cheat which is is not what I did yeah no I wouldn't cheat so usually what I do once I have a new tree species is I go out away from my bee breeding operation so that I can get a bunch of basically pure genetic stock of the new species so I come out here and I bone meal up the tree and as you can see, it kind of looks like the pomelo tree, so it doesn't look any different. And I'm going to imagine that the wood is probably not much different than the, uh, than the genetic line that it came from. But I'm going to break off a couple of these branches with a grafter so that I get a 100% oops, 100 drop. Just so that I have some pure stock. So I can always come back and get pure tree. And then I'm also going to chop down the tree. and it's going to give me some wood. And then we'll go back over here and see if the wood's any different. I don't think it is. I think it's pretty much like all the other citrus wood that I have. Yeah, see, I already have some citrus wood from some of these types of trees and basically it looks the same. But as you can see, these are the different trees that are, tree types that I have for that have gotten different wood. Uh, I got some plum wood, some walnut wood, some citrus wood, some cherry wood, and some lime wood. And so one of the things by breeding your trees is you can generate different building materials. Um, and also their lumber looks different, and so you can make some nice interesting structures. Bee breeding works in the same way as tree breeding, in that you can mix two bee species together and get hybrids and crossbreeds. And again, when you breed certain breeds together there's a small chance of getting a mutation and getting a new species and you can analyze your bees by putting them in a bealizer and this here is the meadows princess that I got from the meadows hive as you can see it's a meadows meadows there are several world gen bees that you get which are basically your hive bees and from them you can breed all the different types of species that basically I have I have bred and I'm not even 10% of the way through the the total number of bee species that you can breed. To start off your bee breeding operation, you're going to need to build an apiary. Once you have your apiary, you can start breeding. So to breed, basically you put in a princess, and then you're going to need to put in a drone. And in this case, I have some purebred common drones. And I can just show you, I can pull out my bealizer, and they're common common. And as you can see, it lists different properties, shortest, lifespan, slower speed, slowest pollination, um, it uses flowers for, it needs flowers to operate, 
its fertility is two times, which means that when uh, it when the species dies, it should produce two different bees. Um, it's this is its pollination area, and there's no effect. So some bees will have an effect around their hive, like cause poison, or sometimes it's a beneficial effect. Um, if you click on tab three, this tells you the climates that these bees operate in. Um, these bees operate in a normal climate under normal humidity. Um, so if I were to try and breed these common bees in a arctic biome or a jungle biome, it wouldn't work because they have no tolerance for that. Um, diurnal means that it's it only flies during the day. Nocturnal is uh, at night. Sometimes what you really want is you want bees that work both in the day and night, so they work all the time. Um, it's not a flyer and uh, does not work in caves. Um, this shows you the products. In this case, it's just a standard honeycomb. And these are the possible mutations that I've discovered, but as you can see, I've, I'm missing a lot. And it even adds its actual you know, genus. Genus and species, family, order, and kingdom. So it's pretty cool. And probably one of the reasons why I actually like this mod is because when I went to university, I had no idea what I really wanted to do. Um, I knew I was going to get into the sciences, but so my first choice was I was going to become a geneticist. And I thought, yeah, this is the future. Genetics is the future of science, and that's what I thought I was going to do. Of course, then I actually took a genetics class, and well, let's just say the fruit fly lab is a bitch. And after that, I decided, eh, genetics was not for me. Okay, so to start mating, basically you pop the drone in the slot underneath the princess and you'll see this bar go up and what's happening is it's making a queen. And once the queen is made, it's going to start working. And you can look over on this box over here and it tells you that the normal climate, normal humidity, so therefore this bee is going to be able to work. And the way an apiary works is the queen's life will tick down till eventually she dies. And once she dies, she's going to produce one princess and one or more drones. Throughout her life, she may also produce some products. And in this case, it's a Meadows Queen, so it'll only produce honeycombs. In this slot here, you can put frames. And what the frames will do, if you just put a standard frame in, it will increase the productivity of the bee, which means more products will be produced. So if I just put a standard frame in, which is just sticks and string, it will increase the productivity, mean, meaning more products. If I don't put any frames in, this apiary is operating at about, I don't know, 20% efficiency or something. And it can only ever get up to about 80% efficiency overall with the three frames in there. To get 100% or more efficiency out of your bees, you actually have to start building alviaries, which uh, I'm not ready to build at this point, so I'll show you those maybe in later. Now, to get mutations, it's basically a waiting game. And you can automate the process, and I did try to automate the process, but I, I didn't really feel it was all that worth it. Because really, you just plop some bees in and, and wait and see what happens. So, while we wait for the queen here to die, so I can show you what happens, I just thought I'd show you like what's actually going on in my beekeeping operation here. Over here, I have a couple of carpenters, and these are used to build different uh, bee-related products. A carpenter is basically just an automated crafting table that includes fluids in your crafting. Um, and you can actually pipe in liquids and just add your materials, throw in the recipe, and it will automatically create whatever recipe is in here as long as the materials are present and create your product and fill up this window here. So if I were to add um, oak wood or any sort of wood, I have wood right there. If I add wood to this, it'll actually start building these impregnated sticks. Here is a centrifuge, and what the centrifuge does is it basically just turns honeycomb into its different products. Um, in this case, it's just going to turn it into beeswax and honey drops. All right, and next to here, I actually have the indexer. The indexer is basically an infinite bee storage. You can throw as many bees as you would like in here, um, and I believe there is a way to search it but I haven't really tried that yet. But, yeah, you can search by species, by type. Anyway, it's basically an infinite bee storage. And what's going to happen if you do any sort of bee production, you're going to end up with a million drones. 
So one of the other things that you can do with your drones, and this is called a gene pool. And what you can do here is you can basically plop in a bee and it will basically convert it to DNA. And then there are other machines that we'll be able to use this DNA for. I don't have any of those machines yet, so I won't be able to show you any of that. But I'm piping the DNA into that iron tank for use later. So basically, I've been using these four hives to do my breeding and mutations. And over here, I have automated my production. And before you want to automate your production, what you need to produce is a stable bee species. So in the case here, I have this common princess with all of these common drones. And how you know you have a stable bee species is that when your queen dies, she will give you a princess and drones that stack. That means that they are the exact same genotype. And as you keep breeding these together, they will keep producing the exact same copies of each other. And they will no longer mutate. And that takes a little while, several, several breeding steps. So what I've set up over here is an automated production line. And I put in my stable species over here, and you put in the princess and the drones. And when the queen dies, what happens is she produces a princess and some drones. And those are then sucked out through the wooden pipe on the side. And then they come over into here which is an apiarist pipe. And an apiarist pipe is kind of like a diamond pipe from Buildcraft, except you can actually choose different options like items, bees, drones, and you can select specific types of bees. So it's like a diamond pipe from Buildcraft, but it allows you to select for different types of bees. But because I'm producing pure, pure bred bees here, I, I can just send all of the bees back into the pipe and then anything else will just come out through the red path. And so a diamond pipe or an APRS pipe works sort of like an insertion pipe, so it won't overfill. So once this is up to its maximum number of drones, any extra drones will then go through the any path. And so basically, my bees come out, fill back up the hive, and all the products and extra drones funnel out into this chest here. And as you can see, I'm collecting various pollens, honeycombs, and royal jelly. And this pollen and royal jelly, this is what's going to actually help me get into alviaries, which is much, much stronger uh, bee production. And so that's how you automate bee production, or an easy way to automate bee production. And um, actually something new that I've never used before, which I've used in this to sort of compact it a little bit, and I haven't made this look all that pretty. I probably could do this in a much, much, much more compact and prettier way. But um, there are these, what they are called, pipe plugs. And basically, when you put them on the top of a pipe, it stops these pipes from auto-connecting. And they're pretty cool. At some point, I should probably basically just do a, a general coverage of Buildcraft, because it's sort of like the core behind anything, and show you how all the different pipes work in Buildcraft. So anyway, let's go over to our meadows and see, oh, the meadows queen has died. And she produced a princess, a common drone, and a meadows drone. And so we can pull up our Bealizer and actually see what happens. So now it was a Meadows Meadows. It's now a Meadows Common Princess. And I have a Common Meadows Drone and a Meadows Common Drone. So I didn't get a mutation. I just got an intermixing. But we can do another cycle and see what happens. And I'm going to put the Common Meadows Drone in and see what happens. Oh, so while we're waiting, I thought I would show you something. Look. I am Iron Man. So basically, um, there's another mod. It's called HD Skins. Um, and there's a database, which is currently down, which has a bunch of HD skins. You can actually search for the skins uh, online. And basically, you can basically get HD-like skins. Look at that. That is one sexy Iron Man. I bet Mr. Tony Stark is going to be pretty uh pretty pleased with this or or unhappy that I'm actually using his skin but screw him I'm wearing power armor leggings and I, I just love the sound of the jump it's a uh, how far you can jump is pretty cool if I get into a nice sprint here 
crazy, right? I love the power armor. Mostly because it just makes uh, life so much easier to travel around the world. Um, I could also add a jetpack to this. Uh, I haven't done that yet. Um, I don't think that I need the flying though when I've got the ability to super jump. But anyway, let's check on our bees. Alright, so after several attempts at doing it without any frames, I finally popped in some soul frames, and so <laughs> it was the second generation after popping in the soul frames that I managed to get the cultivated princess from combining the meadows and the common together. And so roughly I think there's somewhere between a 5 and 10% chance every time of getting a mutation. But once you have the mutation, can check out our cultivated princess as you can see it's actually a cultivated cultivated which is pretty good a lot of times you'll end up with a cultivated meadows or a cultivated common and that is how you breed bees to give you other species so currently the only products that I'm getting in addition to the honey are pollen and royal jelly and this pollen and royal jelly I'm going to use in a carpenter with honey to make alviaries and alviaries are big beehives which I will show you in a future episode. So thanks for tuning in to episode four and stay tuned for the next episode of Feed the Beast Unleashed. And I'm not sure what will be in the next one since I've been promising Thomcraft but still haven't got there. So until next time, Dalgar out.